Okay, uh, good day. I'm Felix the Twitter, and today we're going to be talking about um, inventory systems. Okay, uh, it's just a dummy's guide to inventory systems, like a simplified version to understanding inventory systems and how they work. Okay, so we have to understand before we get to that uh, inventory, inventory is an asset or inventory that's what you sell. Basically, let's say you have uh, merchandise that you're selling. You have trading stock that you're selling. Basically, when you're dealing with inventory, inventory is an asset to the business, right? So it is a, a current asset which is held within a business for a period of around 12 months because you're expecting to convert that inventory into profit. So basically, that is it about in inventory. Others people, they refer to it as stock and stuff and probably in a tuck shop, spaza shop setting. Uh, we we mainly referring to when the owner of the business goes and buys, let's say, things to resell in his shop. The things that they buy to resell, that is what they refer to as inventory. So they are basically two ways which this inventory is controlled by, and you have to understand both ways, right? So the first way is called the periodic, no, it's perpetual inventory control system, right? Then there's another one which is called the periodic. So we have perpetual, we have periodic. Okay. So I'm just going to start with the perpetual. What they're talking about. So every time you're going to see in your notes, someone talk about the perpetual. Perpetual simply means continuous. So it's an inventory system. It's an inventory control system. It's a way that we are controlling inventory, the inventory that we have on hand. So basically, when we're saying perpetual, we meaning continuous. For instance, a business that sells something like electronics, laptops, uh, you have your cell phones, what have you. Those things are sold January to December, without the exception of the special circumstances with the COVID going on and stuff. But on a normal, normal day to daily basis, it is a business that is expected to make sales almost every or throughout the year. So the way that they then move on to control their inventory, they control their inventory by applying what is then called the perpetual inventory control method. The perpetual inventory control method then goes on to say the buying price, right? The buying price of an item is equivalent to your cost of sales. I made a video on cost of sales. You can go and check it out and understand what cost of sales is. But for you to understand, the perpetual is simply saying the buying price, the amount that you're going to buy the inventory for, that is the amount that is directly transferred to as cost of sales. And they then use that amount to calculate your, your gross profit. So perpetual system, we are just saying it's a continuous system. It's not stopping. It is a continuous cycle. We expect to continue, 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 continue in that same wavelength until until we get to the year end or the end of the year so basically inventory is then treated as an asset right because it is uh it is treated as an asset because the business is expecting to convert that asset as a current asset they are expecting to convert that asset into cash within 12 months so basically that is it about inventory okay inventory being controlled under perpetual perpetual system so basically the cost of sales that's where the trick is the cost of sales is equivalent to the inventory amount okay so the invent the, the buying price of inventory becomes the direct cost of sale all right then we have what they then move on to call the periodic inventory system so with the periodic inventory system uh we now saying there are certain goods or products which are not sold the entire year they are sold periodically. Probably fruits, just an example. We have a certain season where we expect to have this kind of fruits. In the next season, we expect not to have those fruits because of things like uh, environmental changes, weather conditions, and a lot of things. So those things, it doesn't make sense for us to then apply the perpetual control system where we're dealing with goods that are periodic. So in that sense, you then have to then apply, a, what do you call it? You then have to apply a periodic inventory uh, control system in your, in your business. 
So the difference now, the major, major difference between the perpetual and the periodic way of doing things. The periodic way of doing things, we now treat cost of sales differently. Remember that side, the perpetual, I just told you now that we treat uh, inventory as an asset and inventory amount is the same as the cost of sales amount. But when we're now dealing with the perpetual, uh, perpetual inventory system, we now have an account which is called purchases. And purchases is now treated as an expense. So when you buy inventory, it doesn't go to the inventory account. It then goes to, to purchases, a purchases, which is a purchases account, which is treated as an expense account to the business. So all of this, we're trying to calculate the cost of sales. So the calculation then becomes different because you now have to say opening inventory plus your purchases plus any carriages on the purchases less the closing inventory. Okay, that is then the calculation that you have to follow. Opening inventory plus your purchases plus any carriage on those purchases less the closing inventory. What do they mean when they say carriage on those purchases? They just mean transport or a delivery. If you're going to be charged something to bring the inventory into the company, that is classified as a carriage, meaning you have to add it to your purchases when you're calculating your cost of sales. So we're now calculating cost of sales under periodic, but under perpetual, there was no need. We just took the amount for inventory and we transferred it directly to cost of sales. But this time, under periodic, you now have to calculate. We now have to know, okay, what is the opening inventory? What is uh, your purchases for the year? What is your carriage on purchases, if there's any? Sometimes there isn't, if there's any carriage on purchases. But be careful, because in exam questions, they enjoy saying uh, carriage on sales. You have to understand, we, we don't include carriage on sales when we're dealing with uh, the calculation for inventory. For this special, for this one reason, because carriage on sales is part of distribution expenses. They are not part of this, the expenses we incurred to bring or to make that sale. So basically, don't include carriage on sale. They usually include it just to confuse you on your question papers, but please try not to. Try not to include it. So we are having the opening inventory. Let's say last year's inventory. Then we add the purchases on top. We add the costs to bring that purchase, right? And at the end of the year, we less the closing stock. Why do we less the inventory at the end of the year? We didn't sell it. And when we're dealing with expenses, you have to understand expenses are closed off annually. They are annualized. So if we are now going to now end up having, for instance, if you are now going to extend or to say we're now going to leave the unsold inventory in the calculation of cost of sales meaning your answer is just going to be incorrect remember with expenses annually per financial period they are closed off so cost of sales we need to close off the expense for the year so the expense for the year can't include the closing inventory because the closing inventory was not sold that's why we have to remove closing inventory at the end and at the end of that, we now have your cost of sales. So basically, with this two inventory system, you just have to understand, okay, what's the nature of the business? Is the business, is, 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 a, is it a business that is on a continual basis? Or is it a business that operates uh, on periods? Then if it operates on periods, it doesn't make sense for you then to go on and apply the perpetual inventory control method on a business that is periodic. It doesn't make sense. So when you have the periodic method, you now also have to understand or to know how to then calculate a cost of sales. That's the trick. And please do not on your questions. They usually give you uh, 1501. I know they tell you, is this a periodic? Is this a perpetual? Uh, 1502 and other financial accounting modules, they might not necessarily tell you, but you have to figure it out. When you see people talking opening inventory, closing, what closing inventory was so much, this was so much, this, this was the carriage, this was what, 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 all those nitty gritties. When they're giving you that information, you have to be alerted that this business could be using periodic inventory system. So please, accounting, you have to read your questions, but read them slowly. Make sure you understand before you attempt, because if you just rush through the things, you will not get a thing. But basically, that is it about just an overview of the periodic 
uh, in the perpetual and the, inv the inventory control systems in a whole. And I hope there's a bit more light on that topic. Basically, perpetual, continuous. We continuous. It's going to be a continuous cycle. Periodic, just for a period. So that's pretty much it for this video on the inventory systems. And thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, share. Let me know, comment, and let's keep the fun going. Thank you so much.